Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I am your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, and our two daughters, Tatum, who is 13, and Delaney, who is 10, and our tuxedo cat, Lilu, uh, who is adorable at all times. Uh, <laughs> If you um, are looking for me, you can find me on Ravelry as Christy Dash Lael and on Instagram as Christy Lael without the dash. And we also have a relatively crafty podcast group on Ravelry where we talk about knitting and have give, al- give alongs and knit aways. We have knit alongs and giveaways. In fact, we are currently having our wonderful winter wrap, uh, wonderful winter warm up. Ugh. Wonderful winter warm-up, Cal, going on right now. It's going from the beginning of winter until the last day of winter, which is like March 19th. And uh, basically, you knit two things. You either knit something, anything, out of worsted weight or heavier yarn. So kind of pull out those bulkier yarns out of your stash. Or you knit a blanket. Um, and with the blanket, you can knit a whip. In fact, I encourage a whip. Uh, it's kind of an idea to kind of get rid of some of, or uh, not get rid of, but finish up some of those languishing whips um, that you have. I know a lot of us have started blankets over the years and then just burned out a quarter of the way through. So this is kind of a catalyst to get those finished up. And, uh, and you can knit the blanket out of any weight of yarn. You can also start a new blanket if you'd like, um, but uh, it's kind of a lot to get a, a blanket knit in three months. I'm sure that some of you can do it, <laughs> and, uh, and I hold you all in high regard, those of you who can. So anyway, um, that, I think, is all of the administrative stuff that I have to talk about. So let's go ahead. That's a really quick introduction. Let's go ahead and get into the knitting. We'll start with FOs, and I have I have notes. Carrie, I'm using my notebook. Um, I've wanted to use it for the past couple of podcasts, but I kept leaving it upstairs, and I do my notes downstairs. And yes, I am that lazy that I can't go upstairs to pick up the notebook. So I finally got it, and I used it this week. So I have uh, three, well, sort of. I have two real FOs and then one not real FO. I'll explain that in a minute. But my two real FOs, one you saw last week, it was a whip. I finished my kitty cat hat. Uh, now I hadn't realized that the um, the women's protest um, was coming up and I, uh, while I have no problem with the women's protest, I did not hit, knit this hat for that. Um, uh, this is orange, obviously. It's the wrong color, and it is not even the same pattern. Um, it The pattern I used is um, Round Head in a Square Hat by El Steffo, and it is meant to be knit out of um, out of uh, fingering weight yarn instead of... I think the other hat is worsted or bulky. Um, I'm not a political person, and I not one to protest, so um, nothing that I ever knit really is ever going to (laughs) be a protest. Um, So anyway, I knit this just because it's darn cute. (laughs) So I hope you guys can appreciate that. I knit it out of two strands of Shibui that I held together. The first one was um, Staccato, which is their fingering weight base, and it is uh, 30% merino and 70% silk. It is super soft. And then in order to give the hat a little bit of a halo and a little fuzziness, I also held a strand of their silk cloud, which is a lace weight yarn, and it is 90% or sorry, 60% mohair and 40% silk. Um, and it is very, very soft. The hat is lovely soft. It is not as fuzzy as I expected it to be. I mean, it has a little bit of a halo, but the but the mohair was so furry when I was knitting it that I really expected the hat to be very furry, but it just has this slight slight halo. It's I still love it. Um, I didn't bring Fred over. He's still wearing my, um, my Bijou Basin Ranch 
um, uh, hat. And so I will just go ahead and try this on for you. So there you go. I found out that I can wear it like a puppy. <laughs> or I can wear it like a kitty. So there it is. There is my kitty cat hat. That's what I'm calling it. Um, I think I might pin these together with some yarn so that they stay kitty cat. I mean, the puppy ones are cute, but the kitty cat one is really cute. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. I did wear it one day this week. We had some snow, and I wore it on that day. It is really warm. I mean, for being fingering weight yarn, it's really warm. The mohair helps a lot, and... Um, and it's soft, and it's comfortable, and it fits perfectly, and it's everything that I wanted it to be, except for not quite as fuzzy, but um, that that's really okay. So anyway, there, there that is that, and I used up almost entirely one skein of the staccato, which are 50 gram skeins, I believe. They're short. They're like 192 yards. Um, but I, and the, and the, the silk cloud was almost 400 yards, some, more than 300 yards. So, um, I have plenty, I have leftovers of the silk cloud, which I might use for something else, I'm not sure. But, um, but I did get away with one single skein of the staccato. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do that, but, um, but I did. Um, I could have knit the hat, you know, another half inch maybe, um, before I ran out, but it's perfect as it is. It's exactly perfect. And I made, ap Ooh, sorry, I made absolutely no adjustments. Yeah, I'm just thinking through, making sure. Yeah, I, I made it exactly to the specifications of the pattern. And it is a free pattern, and it was super fun to knit, so um, I highly, highly recommend it. I gotta fix my hair. one of the unpleasant side effects of my hearing aids. And there are only a few, but one of them is that the microphones are on the back of the hearing aid piece, the piece that goes behind my ear. And so my hair rubs up against it and I hear that and I don't like it. It's like a <laughs> sound. Um, and I can't put my hair behind my ears anymore um, when I like to wear it down um, because I hear that sound. Plus, my ears are really small, and I'm sure you can see my hearing aids. With my glasses, my hearing aids kind of come over uh, the top of my ears a little bit, or they're right against the side of my ears, or the top of my ears, and so there's no space for hair <laughs> anymore. Um, I, I really need to find some kind of different hairstyle. It's been bothering me now for a couple of months. I've been wearing the hearing aids for a couple of months, and I don't... I don't enjoy it. I hate that I have to do the, like basically the same hairstyle every day. I either have to pull it halfway back or I have to put it in a bun um, with a clip. I cannot wear a ponytail uh, with a rubber band because my hair is weak and it breaks. And then I have all these flyaways. So, um, so yeah, I can't just wear it down anymore. So I'm trying to come up with some kind of haircut. Um, I used to have a pixie cut, which I loved, um, and I thought about going back to that, but Ron's not as much of a fan of that hairstyle, um, so we'll see. But anyway, that that's totally off subject. Let me get back into FOs. I did another FO, and if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this, um, and this was not a whip last week, so you guys... Um, who don't follow me on Instagram, you have no idea what I, it is I'm talking about, but uh, you'll learn quickly. Um, after I gave up on those pumpkin spice mittens um, by Skein Deer Knits, and um, while I still really want a pair of colorwork mittens, um, I knew that uh, you know I have a couple of colorwork projects that I that I have to finish. Um, and so the mittens would have to go to the end of that queue and it could be, you know, summer <laughs> by the time I would get to them. I wanted to have a pair of mittens to wear for this winter. So I went ahead and trolled some patterns. Uh, actually, what happened is Visha, um, 
who is a member of the group and somebody I follow on, on um, Instagram, uh, she just made this pattern and I thought those are super cute so I went to look at it on Ravelry and it happened to be the um, the suggested yarn was Madeline Tosh Chunky and I have a skein of Madeline Tosh Chunky in my um, stash that I had had for a long time that I'd wanted to use and so it was kind of one of those things like the the stars aligned for me so anyway I knit the Antler Mittens by Tin Can Knits. It's a lovely pattern. Um, uh, she did the um, the Antler Hat, which I believe is a free pattern on Ravelry, and it is it uses the same cable stitch. Um, the Antler Mitts is a paid-for pattern, but totally fun to knit, and um, in my opinion, completely worth the money. So anyway, I knit them out of a skein of Madeline Tosh Chunky. Now the pattern calls for an Aran weight yarn, and Madeline Tosh Chunky is supposed to be chunky, but it's a it's a light chunky. It 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 kind of qualifies as an Aran. Uh, but in order to make sure that I got what I needed, because uh, I was not about to knit a gauge swatch for mittens, um, I went ahead and knit the adult small size. I still haven't checked my gauge, but you can see that the adult small fit perfectly. Um, my hands are one of the few things about me that isn't, um, that is on the small side, and so um, I can get away with that. And yeah, I absolutely love them. They fit perfectly. And you might have noticed when I turned my hands, I have a little hole right there, and that is not an accident. I put that there on purpose um, because that gives me the ability to manipulate my phone in the dead of winter without having to take my gloves off. Um, and you might notice it's on my left hand, uh, and that is because I am left-handed, so I do manipulate my phone with my left hand the most. And um, so yeah, so I just did a, a, a yarn over, knit two together on one row, and then that just made a little bit of a hole. It's just enough. I mean, my finger can't go all the way through, but it's enough to be able to manipulate my phone. So yeah, I used about just under 90 grams of the yarn, um, so I had a little bit left over. Um, I may get another skein in a complementary color and use what I had left over uh, as like the cuff of the hat or something. Um, I think the skein was like 117 grams. Metal and Tosh doesn't really put their their grams in, in the database on Ravelry, so I think that that skein was 117 grams. I'm not sure if that's like a regular thing for, for Tosh Chunky, but um, it was for my skein. And the colorway is tart. Did I say that? I don't know if I did. But anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful deep red. Um, I, I absolutely love this color. Um, it's one of my favorite Tosh colorways, and this is like the only thing that I have <laughs> in this color. So I definitely need to get some more. But, but yeah, a nice, fun um, stitch. Uh, cable stitch, uh, not too hard. You know, if you know how to cable, you can do it easily. While this is a paid-for pattern, I can tell you that the the cable uh, chart is only like six rows, something like that, eight rows. So it's it's quick and easy, and these knit up super fast. I did like one a day. I could have gotten them done um, even faster because I think I split the second one over two days. But that is because Ron and I wanted to watch. Um, the new Kingsman movie, which by the way was not as good as the first Kingsman movie, um, but we, but I wanted to be able to pay attention to all of the, the fight scenes, um, and I and with cables as much as I, you know I can totally knit cables while watching TV, but I normally am focusing more and listening, focusing more on the cables and then listening to the TV more, whereas when you have you know visual effects or fight scenes or stuff like that you want to be able to look at so I knit my sock instead um, but uh, but yeah super fun super easy super quick one skein of yarn a great weekend project and now my hands will be nice and toasty and I can still use my phone um, and yeah I, I'm very pleased with them why does everybody text me while I'm podcasting and uh, those are my only two official FOs. Now, I said that I have three, 
sort of unofficially, and that is because my pavement sweater, which is supposed to look like this when it's completely knit, but mine only ended up looking about like this, I've decided to rip that out. Um, when I pulled it out to show you guys last week, um, I just, yeah, I just wasn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it looked. I love the way the pattern looks, and I love the way, uh, I've lo I love all the FOs that I've seen um, of people, you know, friends and um, other netting podcasters, but they all made it out of like a, a slightly variegated or a tonal yarn, you know, a yarn that had lots of depth in the color. And the yarn that I used, which is um, Bristol Yarn Gallery in their Linden Hill base, uh, which is a nice drapey, it's, it's cotton and silk blend, um, but it is a very solid um, kind of, it's, the color's not very deep, it's just a, like a, I don't know, a shallow color? Not, not, not unpleasant to look at in any way, but for some, but for the pavement sweater, it kind of needed that, that deep, just, you could tell that the color had layers of, of different tones, and, um, and the Linden Hill just doesn't have that, so, um, I went ahead and I ripped it out, um, I, if you recall, it was on my bingo card to finish that sweater, um, I went ahead and adjusted my bingo card, I'm still, still within the time frame to do that, and, um, and so, I allowed myself to rip it out, but I will, on my bingo card, I have to repurpose the yarn. So I have to find something to knit with the yarn. And I am thinking about doing another Vera Valimaki pattern. Um, pavement is a Vera Valimaki pattern. I'm planning on doing um, another one of her patterns, which is Breathing Space, which looks like this. And it's a really sweet, another simple design, but it's got stripes. Um, and I'm thinking... Let's see that um, that the Linden Hill yarn in the blue and the yellow will be a nice complement, uh, a nicer complement to that than, than they were to the pavement sweater. So that's what I'm doing. So I ripped it all out and I marked that project as a as a frog in my Ravelry. Um, I don't do that very often. I normally because I am mostly a process knitter. Um, I like having the products, don't get me wrong, I love wearing my knitwear, but um, but I, I really just, a lot of the time, I just want to make the thing, so I don't often rip out because I'm enjoying the process, but I just wasn't enjoying the process of that pavement sweater, and I knew that I wasn't going to like the product, and I didn't want to waste all that time and yarn on something that I was just going to end up dropping off at Goodwill. So, yeah. Speaking of, wear, of wearing knitwear, I totally didn't mention that I am wearing knitwear today. <laughs> um, we had two beautifully wintry days uh, yesterday and the day before where it was um, cold and snowy. It snowed on Monday and it was, you know, 20 degrees and it was great. Uh, today it is it's going to be warmer. It's going to be in the 50s. And so I thought it would be a good day to wear this. This is my basic black, which is by Glenna C. Um, and it, and obviously you can see that I did not knit mine in black. So my, my project page is actually called Basic Black, now in full color, um, because I don't do black. Um, I don't own any black and I don't wear any black. And, um, and so anyway, I knit this entirely out of Madeline Tosh DK, uh, their, their Madeline Tosh, Tosh DK, which was my favorite base for sweaters for the longest time. I think that it has now been discontinued, which is sad. I know that Madeline Tosh has lots of DK bases, but this was always my favorite. Um, and I, I'm trying to think if I remember all the colors. Um, the orange, which is kind of the focus color for me, is Napoli, and it's a beautiful bright orange. You might recall from my debut shawl that I knit um, kind of spring of last year. I'll put a picture here. Um, I used the leftover of Napoli for that shawl. Um, and then the variegated is Mansfield Garden Party. Uh, and going off of that, I picked out... The green, let me look, hang on. 
The green is Grove and the blue is Nico. And Nico is absolutely a gorgeous color as well. The Grove, I'm just okay with. It's kind of an olive green, but it is an exact, almost exact match to the, the green that is in Mansfield Garden Party. There's something. I need to, I need to wash the sweater. <laughs> it's a little dirty. Um, I, I don't know if you guys watched the, uh, the Grocery Girls um, their, their crafty, crafts, craftsy, um, show, um, off the needles, on the needles, something like that, but they, they did this little segment about dirty knitters habits, and one of them is, you know, that you don't wash your sweaters very often, if at all, and I really don't, <laughs> I need to, but, you know, I wear them like three times a year, so, um, at least in California I did, and, um, so it's like, well, I just, you know, I have to wash it again, but it's about time. <laughs> anyway, so um, I just, I did the um, stripes kind of willy-nilly. I think I did them 10 rows, which sounded good when I started. It was a bottom-up sweater, and um, and it's got three-quarter length sleeves. Um, I did a, I think I did the band a sleeve, the ribbing a little bit longer so that I could roll them, or fold them up, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. I this was one of the first product projects that I decided I wanted to because I didn't like purling and I didn't like that my gauge was so much looser when I purled and I hadn't learned to knit backwards yet. So instead of knitting this flat, I knit it in the round and then steeped it, um, which was quite an interesting and enjoyable process. Um, so. I don't know if you can kind of see there is I used red thread to sew my steak. I sewed it by hand um, and then cut it. Yeah. So so yeah, it was it was a great experience. And then I I mentioned this the last time that I wore it on the podcast. I um I originally was gonna run out of the Napoli and I made the button band to the pattern specifics, but it didn't it was a little bit too narrow and I never liked it. It didn't fit quite right. I had, the buttons were too far apart, and it gaped a little bit, and so um, I went ahead and found another skein of the Napoli, redid the button band, and I did it about an inch wider, and put the buttons a lot closer together. Added just the tiniest bit of a shawl collar, and, um, and called it good. And I don't ever unbutton it. Like, I just, I put it over my head like a pullover. Um, and so it doesn't get worn unbuttoned, and I like it. But it's it's good for, you know, slightly cool days. I run hot, and I'm always concerned about being overheated, so um, I often don't wear my sweaters unless it's really cold, I mean, outside. Um, and then, because I don't want to get hot. Um, and then when I do wear them, I wear them with, like, a tank top underneath, and so, anyway, I'm trying to to adjust myself and hopefully I can, I don't know, uh, now that I'm going to be going to work, I'm hoping that I'll work um, at an office that, like my, like my permanent job, my real job, that I'll be working at an office that um, that runs cold, that, you know, it's like the one that everybody has to keep a cardigan and fingerless gloves at their desk because they get cold all the time. I'm hoping that that's the kind of office that I work at because I'd love to be able to wear all of my hand knits, but I don't want to get too hot. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay, so I've done the FOs, and I've done what I'm wearing, uh, my past knitting, if you will. So let's go ahead and get into whips. I have a lot of whips, so I have one, two, three, four, five, five whips. We'll start with socks. And I will show you these, although I did nothing on them. These are my um, Rainy Days and Wooly Dogs Goth Socks socks. I, if you recall from my, um, my bingo card, I, by the way, that is a kind of a year long goal oriented cow that Erin of Bling Your Strings is running in her, um, podcast. And I will not in her podcast, but in her Ravelry group. And I will link that below. By the way, Erin is one half of knitting at Tiffany's with added bling along with Tiffany. Um, that one half of that podcast. I will link that down below as well. Um, but one of my bingo goals 
is to knit the three oldest sock skeins in my stash. Because if I do that and I finish my box of socks, which is out of Knit Early Things Vesper Sock, I will have knit all of my sock yarn that is older than uh, 2015, I think. Um, so, so yeah, this is like from 2012. And uh, I started this last week and I showed it to you and I have done nothing on it because I realized that this is not one of the socks that I need to get done before the end of January for my sock cowls. Um, I have two others that need to be done and I wasn't working on those. So I put this aside until I finish at least one of those. And one of those is my box of socks. Socks for, um, oh, sorry, this is the, I didn't say. This is the Suppa Green colorway, S-U-P-P-A Green colorway. But you can't get goth socks anymore because she's a defunct company. But anyway, um, what my box of socks, socks, um, which is the uh, cowl that's run by Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast who dyes wool and vine yarns, She's done this, I think this is like the fourth year now. The idea is that you just knit 12 pairs of socks in the year, and they have to be for yourself, and they can't be shorties, but you can knit any sock pattern um, and and any yarn, I believe. Um, I think it has to be fingering weight, but don't quote me on that. And you put them in a box, and you keep them all year, and then um, in December you have 12 new pairs to put in your drawer. Last year I did it, and I did it with stripey yarns. I used you know, some of my oldest stripies, 12 of my oldest stripies, um, and I absolutely loved having that. I loved the fact that I got to use up some old, old deep, deep stash, um, and, uh, and so I wanted to continue doing it with this year, and so I looked at what I had, and I realized that I had like 15 or 16 skeins of Knitterly Things Vesper Sock, which is one of my favorite stripey dyers, and I thought that would be perfect, so I pulled out 12 skeins of that. And some of them are the ones that I got last year, the um, Rainbow of the Month Club. Um, however, this January skein is not. This is just one that I've, that I've had for ages and I wanted to use it up. And it is Lovely Lollipop Sky. Um, and I mentioned last week that I thought this was going to be, this is one of my older skeins, and I'd had it since like 2011 or 2010. But I was looking at the tag. This is from a sock club from 2008. <laughs> so this is a really old skein. This this is 10 years old. <laughs> so um, anyway, the colorway, as I said, is Lovely Lollipop Sky. And it is a four-color striper um, for lovely colors. And I'm absolutely enjoying every moment of knitting this sock. So, um, so yeah, I haven't gotten very far because I've been trying to get my other pair of socks done. But, um, but I will be getting to this very soon and finishing up. Hopefully, maybe I'll have it done by next week. At least one, hopefully, maybe. We'll see. And I am carrying that in my Heidi Monkey um, Alice in Wonderland's uh, cards soldiers bag. That other pair of socks that... Um, that I mentioned is my Lolo Did It Hippo for New Year's 2018 skein or socks. Um, and I, you know, I did the Hippo for the Holidays Cal last year, and it was another one that I really, really enjoyed. Um, she is doing it again this year with some new colors. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it, but I am going to do the new colors at the very least. Um, so I have the first sock finished, and I'm sorry, I don't, my blockers are way over there. And just as I'm too lazy to come upstairs to get the notebook, I'm too lazy to go over there and get the sock blocker. <laughs> I'll have them on blockers next week when they're done. So the first sock is done, um, and I uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to use for heels, toes, and cuffs, but I found that I had some coal miner's daughter um, that I had bought last year and enough to do this pair of socks. So I use that for heels and toes. It's just a beautiful charcoal color and it really goes with some of the speckles in here. And I have the second sock past the heel, just past the heel. Um, so I, I very nearly had this entire pair done. In fact, I had planned on having this entire pair done for you guys today, but, uh, I got distracted. Um, 
I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I should be able to finish this. I'll definitely have it done by, by next week. It's a fun pair. I'm knitting them with my normal recipe toe up cast on with a Turkish cast on, uh, fish lips, kiss heel, one by one ribbing, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And I just have the leg to do on the second sock. And that is in my Erin Lane Doctor Who sheeple bag. I keep hoping that she's going to come up with another sheeple. I'm hoping she'll do it like an Alice in Wonderland sheeple fabric because I would love to have that. And then in my foppish ferret, you so and so bag, is the Meadowcroft slouchy hat by Dave Burroughs, uh, which I have made no progress on at all this week on. So. There's not much to show you. It looks exactly the same as it did last week. Uh, but I am knitting this out of Meadowcroft Dye Works Rock Shelter Worsted in the Guat Guatemalan Torbus colorway. And it's just like a like a scrappy colorwork hat. Um, just chaotic, scrappy colorwork hat. Um, and hopefully I'll make some progress on that this next week, but I just wasn't feeling it last week. It was my last week of class, you know. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with class. Woo! 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 <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, I, uh, I just, yeah, th this, this last class was super duper rough, and I did not enjoy it, <sighs> but it is done. Um, I turned in my last assignment Sunday evening, um, which was a PowerPoint, and, and I don't build PowerPoint, so it was more stress than it really needed to be. Um, I haven't gotten my final grade. I am hoping that it is a B. Um, we'll see what I got on the PowerPoint. But, um, but yeah, I am done with class. I now have to take four CLEP tests, but I don't have to do any more homework for class. So I'm excited about that. And I started my new job this week. Uh, my first day was yesterday, and it went fine. Um, I was really nervous because I thought, you know, what if I haven't retained everything from school? But um, I retained enough to be able to to do the, the work, and um, yeah, it's I think it's going to be nice. Um, I work three days a week, which is perfect, while the kids are at school, and it goes until April, the job itself, you know, the end of tax season, um, and that is perfect as well because um, that's when I graduate, and so that's when I'll have my official uh, degree and I can go and say yes I am technically a trained accountant because <laughs> I have a bachelor's degree in accounting so yeah thank you everybody for your congratulations um, it was super awesome to have all of those kudos on Instagram and then uh, at knit night last night my friends baked me a cake I'll show a picture here um, and uh, and we just kind of had we had pizza, and we just kind of enjoyed um, and celebrated me not having class anymore. So, yeah. But what was distracting me um, and keeping me from finishing up those Hippo for New Year's socks is that I cast on the Comfort Fade Cardi, finally. Yay! So, Comfort Fade Cardi is one of the more recent fade patterns by Andrea Mowry, um, and it is one that I fell in love with the moment I saw it, and I went and, you know, made special arrangements in order to ensure that I got the yarn that I needed with some very awesome dyeing friends, and, and then I wound up the yarn, and I was so excited about knitting it in December, and then, you know, Christmas happened, and I just could never get it started, and and then, yeah, I just, it was like this was the, I don't know, like the, the, the reward for finishing up my class. I went ahead and cast this on. And uh, the Comfort Fade Cardi is one that is meant to be done in reverse stockinette. And I thought to myself, I don't like reverse stockinette. So I was going to do it in regular stockinette. Um, and I did, I started it that way. But as I was fading from my first color, which, by the way, is Madeline Tosh Long Rider DK in the brass colorway. And I was fading that into my second color, which is Carrie's beautiful yarn. This is the Creative Obsession in her 
plump DK base and the colorway is come together. Come together right now over me. Every time I think of this song, this colorway name, I think of that song. Uh, anyway, um, I totally digressed. I'm sorry, guys. Squirrel. So this was the second color, and as I, as I was doing the fading, um, I realized that I liked the way it looked faded in the reverse stockinette more than the, um, the regular stockinette. So um, I wasn't about to rip it out, but I did have to make some changes. I'll talk about that right now. So here is what I've got so far. There's the brass, and you can see it's fading into the come together. Isn't it beautiful? Let's see if I can stretch that out a little bit. Look at that, guys. Oh, I'm so in love. So um, I was doing it. You do all the increases and everything on the... Um, the stockinette side. Um, so I was doing it and, you know, yeah, it doesn't look bad faded this way, but I think it looks better the other way. So yeah, so what I had to do, uh, this is a paid for pattern, so I can't give you much detail, but I think it's pretty easy to see just by looking at it that you, you purl or you op do opposite. So when you're on the knit side, you purl this raglan stitch, the center stitch of the in between the increases. And on the um, other side, you knit it. So when you're purling everything, you knit that stitch. And when you're knitting everything, you purl that stitch. And it gives you this nice running seam stitch. Well, because I had started out the idea of having this this way, um, and I do, I do have to say that I like the brass, the way the brass looks better this way, but it's a fade, man. It's a fade. Um, I I had just knit that stitch instead of purling it because this was going to be the right side. When I decided, which was only about four rows ago, that I wanted to have it done properly and done in the reverse stockinette, I had to drop that single stitch and knit it all the way back up, which was fine. I have one of those tools that has a crochet hook on one end and like the end of a knitting needle on the other end and they're about that long, um, and I just, I used the knitting needle side to kind of drop that stitch down, and then used the crochet hook to work it, knit it right back up, and, uh, and it worked out perfectly. So I am, I have just finished the last row of the fade, so I'm done with the brass, and I'm now going all the way into the come together. So this is what I'm on now, and then originally my plan was to go and then originally my plan was to go to this, which is also Carrie's gorgeous yarn in the fire in the sky colorway. It's so beautiful. And then finish off with Walker DK, uh, Swinish yarns in their Walker DK base in the Lisa Frank Bender colorway. And when they were in the skeins, I thought this was the perfect fade. However, now that they have been wound up, which I think is a better representation of what they're going to look like knit. I feel like that is a better fade. What do you guys think? That or that. I really feel like this is the better one. And this is what I was asking Carrie for um, for advice. I was sending her pictures, and she had originally said this one, um, and then I was like, well, I like the other one better, and she's like, oh yeah, that one works too. I should have listened to, I should have listened to Carrie. I don't know why I did. She's the color guru. I should have listened to Carrie. Note to self, always listen to Carrie. Anyway, um, I have contacted the dyer of Hello Swoonish um, to see if it's possible, because she doesn't have any more of this in her shop to see if it's possible for her to dye me one more skein. If she says yes, and if you guys all kind of agree, um, then I will put this one in as my uh, my third color, and then this is my fourth color, because I need three skeins of the third color and two skeins of the fourth color, which means that I will have an extra skein of this, because I have three of Fire in the Sky, but there is no need to worry, because this would make a gorgeous hat 
or a cowl or mitts or something. I love this colorway and um, I can definitely find a use for this skein. So anyway, I am making my way through. Yeah, I've got, let's see if I can make it look like a sweater for you guys. Got about that much done. A little bit, a couple more increases before I take the sleeves off. And um, yeah, I'm loving it. It's so much fun to work on. Um, I, I, the, the fades, it's such a genius idea and so simple. Um, but it really makes a plain sweater, it gives it that extra oomph and it, it makes the knitting more enjoyable because you, know, you only knit like four, four and a half inches before you start a fade. Um, so you only have to knit a single color for four and a half inches and then you start a fade. And then by the time you're tired of having to go between two yarns, um, the fade's over, and then you're knitting single yarn again for four and a half inches, and then you start another fade. And so it really keeps it very interesting and so much fun to watch the colors come out and, you know, absolutely loving that. And I am keeping that in my uh, You So-and-So purple rain cloud bag. I don't remember what she called it, but I loved it. And uh, that is all that I have for whips. Five is enough, right? <laughs> so um, now is the time for yarn haul. I have a very small yarn haul today, um, and I almost didn't have any. Uh, I happened to get these yarns in the mail yesterday. So there was almost no yarn haul this week. Uh, these are ones that I ordered before, before Christmas, maybe? Maybe after Christmas, but before the end of the new year. Uh, if you guys recall, Giddy Knits, um, she's the one that I got the Christmas stocking sock set from. Uh, she gave us a coupon code for 20% off, maybe? And I wanted to take advantage of that. I am not one to look a gift coupon in the face. Um, and so I ordered two more sock sets from her. Uh, one is going to be socks for my mom. And that is this one. This is called Ballerina. The the main her sock sets are a 50 gram main skein and then a 20 gram mini. Um, if you guys know of any other dyers that do, that do this, uh, is I know that hand dyed by Kate does them, and of course um, Giddy Knits does them. Um, um, I want to say that I know of one other. But they're all UK-based dyers. Um, I'd love to know of, an, of a US dyer that does this with a 50 gram and a mini, uh, 20 gram mini, so they're 70 gram skeins. Um, I'd like to be able to get those. I love this idea. I don't need more than 70 grams to make a pair of socks. And the price is a little bit lower, which is nice, but I, I'm kind of losing out on, you know, kind of the saving the money with the cheaper price because I'm paying to ship it from the UK. Totally worth it in every way, don't get me wrong, but it would be nice to be able to um, save a little money as well <laughs> and have it shipped quicker and cheaper. So if you know of any dyers, let me know down below that do a, a mini sock set like this, you know, with 50 and 20. Um, let me say that again, with 50 and 20. <laughs> I realize I mentioned that a lot. Um, as I know a lot of dyers that do like a 100 gram and then a 20 gram, but I, I really want the shorter sock sets. So anyway, this is Ballerina. The main base is kind of a, a pinky, a really pale pink. And it looks like it's kind of a tonal, some, some where it's, it's going to be pale pink and then some new natural as well. And then there are these beautiful purple and blue speckles all throughout. And the purple is the exact color of this mini. And my mom saw that and she thought that these would be great socks for her. So um, I am always on a lookout for socks that I know that she will like. And this is definitely one that I will enjoy knitting. Um, and then I got one for me. And that is the Artie colorway. And so this is a, um, a purplish mostly purple. There's a slight pink tinge to it, but it's mostly purple. Main skein with this beautiful blue 
contrast. And I love that. I love that there's there's like no tying in. They're just two colors that just look good together and they're going to be fabulous socks. And that is my entire haul. Not, not a lot. Um, trying to be more conscientious about my yarn buying. At least until I knit some down. I'm not on a yarn buying ban. I don't want to do that. It's 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 not even that I have too much yarn because comparatively when you compare me to some of those other um, you know real hardcore knitters that have been doing this for a decade they've got like yarn rooms and um, I uh, I don't. <laughs> so um, so anyway, I'm, I am trying to be a little bit, just a little bit more conscientious about, about my yarn purchases. But uh, let's go ahead and get into reading. Um, I did finally finish uh, Topics About Which I Know Nothing by Patrick Ness. And like I said, this is, is a um, short story collection, and I'm normally not a big fan of short story collections. I have a hard time getting into them. Um, the stories aren't long enough. <laughs> And so I just, I'm like, well, it's, I, now I need more. Or I just need to know more about the characters before the re resolution comes. And, and I just kind of, it bums me out. But I did like this one. Some of them are kind of creepy. You know, there, there's a, a kind of a Twilight Zone-ish feel about a lot of them. Um, I will say that the earlier stories spoke to me more than the later ones and so it kind of ended on a low note for me because I didn't really like the last two stories especially or maybe the last three were not my cup of tea um, but the first the earlier ones I really liked a lot but I do highly recommend everything Patrick Ness writes I recommend honestly every single thing and so I have picked up Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick, and I feel like a moron because last week I was like, yeah, I think it's like sci-fi. Dude, this is the book that inspired the movie Blade Runner. <laughs> and I kind of knew that, but I, I didn't make the connection. Uh, and so somebody pointed it out to me very nicely. So you remember that movie from the 80s? You know, with Harrison Ford and big big, big, big blockbuster movie. Yeah. Blade Runner. That's what this book is. That's, that was based on this book. Um, and so I am going to read this book. I am about 40 pages in, not very far. I'm going to read this book and then I'm going to rewatch Blade Runner. I haven't seen it in, in probably 10 years. Um, and then Ron and I are going to watch the second Blade Runner. The, it's not a remake. It's like a sequel, right? I don't know. Um, but uh, we are going to watch that after we finish this. And then I also just finished Heartless by Marissa Meyer, finally. It took me a long time, but this was a reread, so um, it was fine. I loved it. I, I loved it the first time. I loved it the second time. It's an Alice in Wonderland um, adaptation. Well, not an adaptation. It's, it's a... It's basically the origin story of the Queen of Hearts, as thought of by Marissa Meyer, not by Lewis Carroll. But I think that she wrote it very much in the style. Uh, I think that Lewis Carroll would approve of this. And um, yeah, loved it. Absolutely love it. Highly, highly recommend anything that she writes. Um, she wrote the um, Lunar Chronicles, which was an amazing series, and then Heartless. And then I have her newest book, which is called Renegades, I believe. Um, that came out last fall, and I haven't read that one yet. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to listen to next. Um, I have a friend who uh, wants to do another buddy read, so I might pick. I'm trying really, really hard to read books that are on my shelf. Um, my shelves are overflowing, and, um, and I want to kind of be able to cull, but I don't want to cull books that I haven't read yet. So... Basically, I'm reading books, and then if I don't love them, I'm taking them to the used bookstore. If I do love them, then I'm putting them on my already read shelf. So I'm kind of hoping to get through some of the, more of them, because I still have twice as many books that I still need to read than I do of books that I have read. 
on my shelves, not, of course, of the books that I, you know, want to read anywhere. I've, I've read lots and lots of books. Um, I read 162 books last year. I read 245 books the year before and like 220 books the year before that. But there's, I bought more. <laughs> I bought more than that <laughs> in the past couple of years. Many, many more books than 200. So I probably have about 700 books on my shelves that need to be read. <sighs> Maybe 500. Because I have about 800, 900 books on my shelves. It doesn't matter. Anyway, the point is, is that I have a lot. I have like two full-size bookshelves, bookcases that need to be read. And like one and a half that have already been read. So... Anyway, um, I guess that's it, guys. Um, yeah. Have a wonderful day. I am going to enjoy the fact that I have no homework to do today. Wednesday was always a big day because our first discussion questions always do on Wednesday. Wednesday and Friday. And this Wednesday, I don't have to do one. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to rub it in, though, because Ron still has six more months of school. Now, he'll graduate with me in April, but he won't get his diploma until he finishes his last class, which ends, like, June 27th or something like that. So, um, so he has this class and two more still to go. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, support him and not make him feel bad that he still has six more months of class. But I'm so happy to not be in class anymore. <laughs> such a good feeling. Now I just got to finish those four tests and I'll be completely done with school. I won't have anything hanging over my head anymore. Kids, if you're watching, go to college right out of high school. Don't wait. Don't wait till you're 35. It's been hard. Two kids, a cross-country move, you know, a husband who's working full-time. There was a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. I'm glad that it's over. All right, guys. Um, I will, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. I hope you have a wonderful evening and happy knitting. Bye.